a August 5th, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting. I'll now call the meeting into order. Uh, the first item of business, as always, is our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. And this evening, we have Pastor Eric Fretz here of Bridge Church. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this board, Lord. I just pray a special blessing over their families and their marriages, God. I just pray that you would give them a special grace, God, in their lives to make every decision for the people of this great county. And God, I just do pray for the people. God, I pray for the people that are here and, and that ultimately are represented uh, here. And so, Father, would you, just, uh, would you just reign with righteousness and holiness, God, out of this place? And, and would the decisions made, God, just be for the best for all parties involved? And God, would you just bring a special wisdom, Father, to each person as we continue to pave the way for the future of Currituck County? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you would, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have our ethics awareness and conflict of interest reminder from the county attorney. Okay. Pursuant to GS 153A-44, a commissioner has a duty to vote on matters coming before the board, but may be excused from voting on issues involving the commissioner's own financial interest, official conduct, or on matters on which the commissioner is prohibited from voting under GS 14-234 or 160D-109. In accordance with Chapter 2, Division 3 of the Curry Tech County Code of Ordinances, it is the duty of every commissioner to avoid both conflicts of interest and appearances of conflict. Does any commissioner have any known conflict of interest or appearance of conflict with respect to any matters coming before the Board of Commissioners in this meeting? If so, please identify the conflict or appearance of conflict. I, I said it. Too. I think you're good. I said it at last meeting, yeah. so it was 30 plus years ago. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Got to disclose it all. <laughs> right. All right. Next up is the approval of the agenda, and we do have a few changes this evening. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I first move to table uh, the public hearing item PB24-18, Currituck County Text Amendment, uh, until a, a discussion at a future work session and a date to be determined. I also move to amend the closed session to include the following pursuant to NCGS 143-318.11A3 to consult with the county attorney and preserve attorney-client privilege and to discuss the matter entitled Wellhead Property Owners Association v. Currituck County and CB Land Development Incorporated and NCGS 143-318.11A5 to discuss, to establish or instruct county staff on a position to be taken by the county regarding county-owned property located at 2826 Caratoke Highway, Caratoke, pin number 0050000061000, and regarding the real property owned by Winchaser LLC, located on Caratoke Highway, Moyoc, pin number 0023000068H0000, and NCGS 143-318.11A6 to discuss personnel matters. Thank Sorry. you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> All right. Thank you. I'll take that back so we can read that down later. All right. Uh, first item on the agenda this night is public comment. Uh, Steve, you're the only one I got signed up tonight. Steve Hedrick? Not here? Oh, there, yes. there you are. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't been here a bit, so I apologize for missing my civic duties. <laughs> That's all right. Steve Hedrick, 296 Summit Farms Trail, Mayock. Um, after the budget amendments were passed, I went down to the Board of Education and spoke to them concerning uh, addition to the Technical Review Committee. Based on what I've read in the UDO, uh, their opinions uh, may be asked during the stages of TRC comments um, if they have, you know, to, to join in with it. I would submit to this board that they should be made a member of the TRC. Um, in effect, they can help themselves if they know uh, better what's being developed in the county to further help them with their own budgetary matters and ensuring that our students have the highest education possible. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was the only person that had signed up this evening. Is there anyone else that would like to speak tonight for public comment? All right, seeing none, we will close public comment. Move on to commissioner reports. Um, Owen, start out with you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. <clears throat> I attended last Saturday the Not Silent Peach Festival. Everybody there seemed to have a good time. A lot of children, a lot of things going on. And I commend the Not Silent Ruiton Club for pulling it off and doing a good job again. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kevin? All right, we're going to be quick. Um, <clears throat> school starts Wednesday, so you're going to see the flashing lights at NAP. If you ride through the school zone, NAP school starts Wednesday. So uh, Dr. Lutz is nodding his head, so I'm <clears throat> correct. Um, so like I said, I'll, when you see that on, that school zone will be worked, and then the regular school starts on the 28th. So um, summer's winding down, which is a good thing. The weekend traffic will wind down as well. Um, nothing besides. I just I just would like to say a prayer for the family for the uh, that lost the life of their their child last weekend that drowned in the uh, in the ocean. Um, prayers to them. I mean that's a terrible thing to lose a child. And um, like I said, you know you come on vacation, something awful and detrimental like that happens. I mean you can't. There's nothing you can say. So, and also prayers for the horse that was that was struck and all that stuff. So, and was killed last Saturday too. That was a back-to-back -back, uh, dual tragedy. So, that's it for me. Okay, thank a you. A minute. <laughs> Look at me. Paul. Uh, nothing okay. this evening. Mr. How about you, Miss Elena? I have nothing tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> wow, we're just rolling through. Miss Getty, anything? Well, I do have something. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since October 2023, I've been honored to serve on the Commission for the Future of North Carolina Elections, sponsored by the North Carolina Network for Fair, Safe, and Secure Election, in partnership with Catawba County and the Carter Center. The primary goal is to enhance voter confidence and trust in North Carolina elections by educating the public about best practices, conducting research on election processes, suggesting ways to improve for the future. The commission formed 11 specialized committees to focus on various aspects of the election. Each aspect of election from candidate filing, ballot access, voting, counting votes, challenges, and lawsuits was reported at the July 15th meeting at Catawba County. After the 2024 election cycle, the commission will examine and analyze, analyze the election related issues and publish a comprehensive report of its findings and any proposed election reform. With less than 100 days before the general election, there will be plenty of misinformation showing up on the internet and by word of mouth. As a commitment to public education, the Commission and the North Carolina Network for Fair, Safe, and Secure Elections will be holding town hall meetings to address common election myths. On September the 18th, the trusted North Carolina election tour will come to Elizabeth City at Elizabeth City State and on September the 19th, it'll be in Manio. Closer to the dates, I'll have more information and share it on the county website. Also, if you read anything or hear anything that doesn't sound quite right, give the election board a call and speak with the director, Kimberly Twine. Her number is 232-2525, because if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably not true. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mike, anything for you this evening? Uh, nothing this evening, Jim. All right. I'll be very brief as well this evening. I uh, just wanted to say the new county website looks great. Uh, it's a much more functional, at least in my humble opinion, to use than the old county website. So kudos to all involved in that. Um, last meeting, the Board of Commissioners uh, voted to put on the ballot a quarter cent tax increase in sales tax. We're going to be putting out a lot of information in the coming weeks and months about that, what that means, what the money will be used for. Um, we'll, we'll probably do a mailer. We're going to try and get that out before all the election crud shows up in your mailbox. So if you see something from us from Currituck County, take a second to read it. It might actually have something on there, and we'll probably put out something, obviously, in the focus on Currituck, which everybody gets. 
and uh, do some videos as well. So just want to make everybody aware of that and be on the lookout for it. Like I said, we're going to put some together some information to help people understand, you know, that what's being asked and, and the need and the reasons for it. So that's it for me this evening. Did I steal any of your thunder, Rebecca? Okay, good. All right, we're well, up. Great. Thank you this evening. Thank you. I just wanted to share that staff is monitoring Tropical Storm Debbie and remind folks that if they'd like updates, that there's um, Curry Tech Alert, which is available through the Everbridge mobile app. Um, you can search for Curry Tech County or Curry Tech Alert in the app, or you can text C Tuck Alert to 888-777. It's a, a keyword application that'll get you updates. There's also information posted on the website and updates will be shared on Facebook as well. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, how about from our county attorney? Ms. Megan, anything from you tonight? No report. All right, thank you. All right, uh, as we said, we are postponing our public hearing, uh, PB 18, uh, Kirtuck County text amendment. We're going to, uh, we have some other stuff related to that. So we're going to sit down with county staff. We'll uh, bring that forward or not as, as it uh, moves through. Um, next up is new business this evening. Um, we have text amendment PB 2416, Walton and Ginger Morris, confirmation of motion to include consistency, sta consistency statement. We missed that last time. And I think that was just, very simply, Paul, you made the motion to read in a consistency statement. Is that what you're after, Jenny? Okay. That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move to approve PB 2416 Walton and Ginger Morris text amendment because the request is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of Imagine Kirtuck 2040 vision plan and the UDO, including land use goals two and three and economic development goal number two. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Uh, next up, consideration for approval of hangar elevations for Elizabeth City State University project in the Maple Commerce Park. Ms. Jenny's got some stuff to show us this evening. Um, sure. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening. Good evening. I'm going to actually go to the end of my PowerPoint <coughs> first. All right, right so to the this is uh, related to the, the piece of property where Elizabeth City State University is going to be constructing um, classrooms as well as uh, a hangar and a maintenance area and um, an additional storage area. And you can see here it's a 230 airport road, um, the airport being over here. So the subject property is here that we're talking about. Um, it's part of Maple Commerce Park. Here's an overview of the site plan that was submitted and is currently being reviewed by the Technical Review Committee. Um, you can see that the, this here is a um, taxiway that will be coming from the airport uh, onto the property. There's area here um, for movement of airplanes. Here's the maintenance hangar and associated classroom building. Um, and then the storage hangar here. Jenny. Yes, sir. Just real quick while we're looking at that, that taxiway, uh, is that able to be extended if need be further, if we get another building? There yes, there's okay. an easement there. Yes, sir. Good question. Um, then you can see there's parking located between the building here and this, this, um, apron. this area, apron, thank you, and uh, the road. Um, so just kind of orienting you to the site initially. Uh, you may recall that you did see elevations for a building that was built in the park, uh, I think, about two years ago. Um, and so since the county is the uh, uh, declarant of the park and there are restrictive covenants, the board has uh, reviewed elevations and approved them for that project and will do the same for this project. Um, here's an overall uh, uh, architectural drawing uh, plan of the project so you can see the colors proposed as well as the design of the buildings <clears throat> and then these this plan um, here is you can see here let's see if I can do this just the elevation of the front of the building and there's the side facing the south which is really just 
metal facade with some windows in the front building there. Um, the east elevation, which just has the classrooms, and then the north elevation that has the hangar space as well as the classrooms to your right. So that's the, the larger building, and then there's uh, the elevations of the other hangar are, are pretty simple, just standard mm -hmm. um, metal, metal siding. So initially, just any comments that the board has about these details and any additional details that you might like to see on the buildings or whether you're, you're fine with the way they currently look. There's um, not really any specific guidance with respect to building elevations in the covenants. But then there, there's one other thing we need to talk about, which is the site plan layout. Um, so you can see that here's Airport Road. There's parking located between the classrooms and the road. The restrictive covenants require that parking be um, to the side or rear of a building. And so you can see now that with the, this taxiway expansion, and the way they've designed the project that they would prefer not to have the parking on the sides or rear. So that will require uh, an amendment to the restrictive covenants. The board would like to see that amendment. And then also one other um, requirement of the covenants is that no improvements may be placed within 30 feet of the front uh, property line. And that's gonna include any improvements, including parking. And you can see there's just a little bit of parking here within 30 foot setback. Um, I will say that on a typical um, project that's zoned LI that doesn't have these restrictive uh, covenants, we would allow parking closer to the street than 30 feet, and the side or rear requirement for parking spaces would not apply. So a, a couple of comments on, number one, vehicular parking. I, I can't think of a single time I've ever seen parking with the aircraft up front and parking in the back of a building. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So that this is a normal layout as far as from a general aviation perspective, uh, number one. And number two, the um, architectural, um, I guess, drawing. Could you go back to that that shows this? The rendering? Yeah. And that fence is going to be six feet high? Eight? OK. That's it. Okay, I'm just it, waiting. Well, you're the, you're the I'm expert. sorry. It, it, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it's as high because we had to get some fencing higher than what it was over by the ramps. So, right? so I guess does Jenny, do you need direction then for you to move yeah. forward with? I guess what well, is a, is a uh, really I would need direction on whether you would like to see that amendment to the restrictive covenants. Yes. 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 Okay. It, so that would be that in a motion. Um, I think just giving me direction and then I can bring it forward, which it would also require consent of any other owners within Maple Commerce Park, which I think is just, just the Brenly. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to get that as well, but I wouldn't think that would be a problem. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Anything further, Jenny? No, okay. sir. Do you guys what? have questions on the elevations? Uh, I think there may be a representative from ECSU. There is. I was going to see if William had anything he wanted to add. Or any, we, have, we don't get them often up here, so, you know, <laughs> just having them out here. <clears throat> it <looks> like, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that, the, again, the taxiway that we could, if we need No, that's, yeah, you beat me. Okay. Right. I, would, I had that, but I was like, I was trying to be patient. It's okay. Yeah, the, the taxiway is, uh, we have that easement right away, I think 120 feet is what we put on it, so we had the right, or the ability to access the other lots. Uh, okay. The goal right now is to actually to have our access that'll go right past our building for our terminal building, unless we find another tenant for the other lots, which would be cool to have more there. Right. Uh, the fence-wise, it'll be eight foot with barbed wire, and that's, that's a requirement, so um, should be no issue. And 
Amanda and I were just discussing, um, you know, getting, we need to get together on a meeting just to discuss how the fence will meet up together to ours. Uh, I had a meeting with our engineer today discussing that. So we're trying our best with this project to kind of work together and hopefully our hangar and taxiway project is going to roll at the same time this will hopefully be bid out at the same time this will um, <clears throat> so we can move together and uh, them not finish before we are or vice versa. Uh, and then we're trying to also look at how we can put everything together so it makes sense long term. So we're going to have to do some movement with our fence to bring in our new hangers and things. We're trying to make sure that we're planning for future uh, future hangers and future terminal building. So trying to really look past today and into the future, especially with uh, hopes of mid Currituck Bridge happening and our traffic uh, significantly increasing more than it already has. Mm -hmm. What what kind of weight is that taxiway going to have? That's a great question. I'd have to ask. I know we had some discussion on it, um, but probably not as heavy for some of the larger aircraft since it is just for a small. Um, it's probably at the minimum requirement. So if we were to bring in additional something larger, we would probably, probably since it's their uh, taxi lane that they're installing, maybe have to go in and it'll be asphalt. So it could be as simple as uh, overlaying and strengthening that, depending on the size of the aircraft. So, I mean, handle a King Air? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it'll handle just about anything that would go in there. It just wouldn't handle some of the stuff that I've seen in the last week, uh, Global and <laughs> Gulfstream, which... If we get some of that back there, it'd be really nice. I think we've seen them coming in. <laughs> right. yeah. What yeah. kind of Gulfstream? Uh, we had a G4 in this week and a Global 6500. Mm. There you go. Yeah, two, two, two G4s. Mm. So, um, but uh, to give you just a quick uh, cap of last week, um, 30 jets in seven days. Wow. In a so, week? Yep, in seven days. We had, and now some of those were the same aircraft picking up multiple sets of passengers. So the mm -hmm. Gulfstream that came in was the same one. It came in on Thursday and again on Friday, uh, and then again on Saturday, uh, picking up passengers. Was that 650 the same one as a, a um, different It's a different, yeah, different set. Yeah. So it's it's been a busy, busy a week. Nice, and uh, my parking nice lot is, <laughs> it is a very nice jet. And my parking lot is, every spot was filled this morning <laughs> when I pulled in the parking lot with rental cars wow. that were returned. So. Um, we didn't stuff. see, uh, don't usually see a beginning of August like this. So, uh, it was definitely a, a busy week. So, wow. Can I answer any other questions or? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Work. Yeah. Real quick, <laughs> just real quick follow on. So do you, and we may not even know this yet. So I, most of what COA has at the other end of the airport, not much of any of that flies. None, none right. of it does. So is the intent similar here, or is the hangar going to be a maintenance hang? I mean, yeah, they, I, be... and, and Amanda, correct me if I um, speak out of term here. The, the hangar that's connected to the um, classroom space, uh, that will be, I think, more of a maintenance hangar. So they'll do uh, minimal maintenance. You know, their normal 100-hour inspections, 50-hour inspections, annual Annuals. inspections, um, nothing major. Uh, the storage facility will, will strictly be for storage of the aircraft that they have. So right now, I mean, there's a, we got a tropical storm hurricane on the move to us, and they've got uh, 14 airplanes sitting outside in Elizabeth City um, that are going to sit out for this storm. So I think the goal is is building enough space there that they can house most of their aircraft. The initial goal is they'll stay there for training. We'll have, I think they said they'd like to have three as they open this facility that will be based at Currituck full-time. But the goal is they have enough room on that lot and the ability to build that they can house most or all of their aircraft in uh, emergency situations because those those aircraft are cost upwards of half a million dollars a piece. So that's a lot of and, and I don't know if anyone saw in the news Chesapeake, uh, I believe it was two weeks ago, had a micro burst that hit the airport and it tore up about six airplanes. It totaled at least three. So um, and those were some of those were very expensive and hard to find and replace. That's, I think the university would have 30 plus airplanes now if they could get them. We have 13. 13, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and counting, I think yeah. every month they're, I mean, they're buying as many as they can get. They just can't get them as fast as they're making them. So, wow. uh, so the hangar space is uh, definitely a necessity. And with that being our next project of bringing 10 more T hangers to the airport, trying to house as many of them inside as we can. What's so, our waiting list now? 57 people. 
How many? 57. Mm -hmm. I was in a meeting a couple <laughs> weeks ago uh, with some uh, individuals from the Norfolk Airport. Uh, the Norfolk, uh, the city of Norfolk has decided that uh, they're going to require uh, the airport to demolish 40 of their T hangers because they want to bring in, they want to get rid of the small aircraft and bring in corporate larger jets as they already have there. And so 40 aircraft are going to be displaced. Yeah. So they were calling me, asked me, how many can you take? <laughs> I said, I, I, I said, put your name on the list. And not, I haven't had any of them add their name to the list yet. So that 57 is not including those that will be displaced from their hangars wow. within the next, I believe they have a, uh, 18 months. The, the, the uh, contractor of that airport there has 18 months to demolish and rebuild corporate hangars. Now, some of those aircraft could probably go in the corporate hangar, but they're all kind of trying to figure out where they're going and what they're going to do. So I think some have thought about selling, and then others are just looking for hangar space. So wow. definitely a big, big necessity. And, and if you call around to any airport around us or in, uh, honestly, the United States, uh, there's a shortage of hangars. Um, and the state has, um, that's been our discussion over the last two years, and they have looked to give us funding for hangars, whereas they have not before. Before it was a revenue-based uh, necessity there, and they figured that the counties and cities that were renting these hangars should be able to, with the revenue, build new ones. But unfortunately, hangars are very expensive, uh, and that revenue is not going to touch what it costs to build it. It takes a long time to recoup it. But the other big thing is that the tax dollars that it brings in. Uh, we had a hangar come available this week. I uh, had it, funny enough, re-rented within the hour, and the airplane within the hour in that hangar, and that, that uh, airplane is worth about a million dollars. So, and they'll pay property tax here. Wow. So um, that's, the, that's the other, not only just the monthly income, the, the property tax that comes from the aircraft is mm -hmm. a big benefit to us. Mm -hmm. All right. Good stuff. Good news. Yep. Yep. So these are... Bad problems to have. Yep. Good problems to have, yep. I guess, right? Well, we're looking forward All right. to seeing that. All right. Them, Thank you, guys. Thank you, William. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right. Next up, we have board appointments. We have our opioid advisory board. You seem to be the, the woman of the hour on this Well, one, thank so. you. Uh, this is the last um, member of our initial appointees. Her name's Karen Tijano. Uh, she was on the opioid uh, task force and has agreed to serve a one-year term. So I move to appoint Karen Tijano to the Opioid Advisory Board. Okay. I'll second. second. Kevin seconds. Thank you. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, next up. Chairman, speaking yes, of board appointments, uh, I think the senior citizen is lacking. They have two vacancies. Uh, we need to make sure that if you have a vacancy that needs to be filled, because sometimes some of these committees are calling around, making sure they're gonna have a quorum. So if you've got anybody that needs to be appointed, please look over the list that Leanne has and let's get these vacancies filled. Thank you. You pretty much give us updates pretty regularly. You want me to ask my thoughts. Yep, she does. All right, thank you. Well, uh, Leanne probably has some applications on file, I'm guessing, so. Yep. Okay, thank you. Next up is the consent agenda. Uh, anything in there that needs to be brought up and discussed? Move for approval. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, folks, that's it for tonight. We're going to go into closed session. Um, I'm going to move to go into closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-318.11A3 to consult with the county attorney and preserve attorney-client privilege and to discuss the matter entitled Wellhead Property Owners Association v. Kirtuck County and CB Land Development, Inc. and NCGS 143-318.11A5 to establish or instruct county staff on the position to be taken by the county regarding county-owned property located at 2826 Kirtuck Highway, Kirtuck pin number 05-000-0000-610000. And regarding the real property owned by Windchaser LLC located at Kirtuck Highway <laughs> and Mayock pin number 0023-000-68H-0000 and NCGS 143-318.11A6 to discuss personnel matters. Second, please. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, we'll stand at ease till we can get everybody out of here.